Uh, you join us today uh, as I sit in a stolen tie to review my favourite crisps and to keep it slightly on brand I'm going to compare and contrast them with uh, a film that I think lines up uh, with that uh, level of crisps and um, for my low tier level of crisps and I like most crisps even those like economy ones that cost like about 30p for like 12 bags but the first ones I've picked are hula hoops I nearly picked plain hula hoops but I thought I'm going to have to actually eat these afterwards so I'm not a complete maniac and I think the film I would probably compare these to is uh, A View to a Kill it was uh, a Bond film that took me a while warm to so I've always got in the back of my mind it's not very good but I watched it quite recently and I loved it <laughs> I thought if you watch this film and not as a James Bond film but it's a film about a, an elderly man who thinks he's a secret agent. It's, it's absolutely charming. A bit like hula hoops. Let's check them out. This could be like the world's worst ASMR video. I think one of the reasons I don't like them is they're a bit odd. We've got quite good here. Oh, I'm going to take it all back. They're really good. <laughs> For my mid-tier of crisps, I've gone for a, a gold standard really in this country. I've gone for cheese and onion, gone for the Walker's variety. At the moment they've got Mariah Carey uh, dealing out crisps this time around, not uh, Gary Lineker. I actually had somebody in my family once say, Walker's aren't the best kind of crisps. You know what, they might have a point. I've seen this house here, it's got no windows, but it's right drafty in there. Let's just try them out. What's funny though, because I don't really come into contact with cheese and onion crisps very often. Once I have like a couple, I go on a mania and I start having loads of them. These are really nice. I think if you left me in a house full of beer, full of cheese and onion crisps, I think I'd more likely eat all the cheese and onion crisps before the beer. <laughs> Actually, that's not true, I'd drink all the beer first. What film would I pair these up with? I think Cheese and Onion, because they're so British. Probably have to be a British film. And I'd probably go for that um, Norman Wisdom one, where he works in a milk factory. <laughs> Whichever one that is. <laughs> now we're up to the upper echelons of crisps, the top tier. I've always kind of thought this really, that you get different tiers for different things. And even sometimes you'll get people talking about like The Godfather Part 2, when really a film that's probably not as good will be in my top tier. And along those lines, a sort of vinegar discos. And I know a lot of people thinking, why if it's just a generic flavour like salt and vinegar? Aren't all salt and vinegar crisps the same? Well, they're not because discos have somehow broke the laws of physics by not much, pretty much salt on the crisps but it actually takes the roof of your mouth off let's try them on camera they're very salty and I think there's some flats just behind me I think it's where I got this scar on my chin when I was about six I was so excited to go to my uh, sister's Linda's house I was running up the steps I fell over Got a scar on my chin, and now when I grow a beard, it takes three months for cover it up. But what top tier film would I pair with these crisps? Probably Louis Teague's Jewel of the Nile. There's an ongoing debate between me and my friend. This pucker pie sign behind us doesn't get taken in at night. I think it does. My mate says it doesn't. We go past it at all different times of day, different days of the week, and it's still there. So there's the question, does that sign get taken in at night or not? <laughs> and uh, the next god tier of crisps, these are absolutely amazing, although just a bit of a slight caveat, when I was at college in uh, 1999, there used to be a vending machine 
that used to do a version of these crisps that I think were like pickle flavour that were like almost from a quantum universe, whatever that means. And the next level, God level of crisps is Brannigan's roast beef and mustard. And again, this could be lost in the ravages of time. Well, I feel like there was like at a, some kind of part dealership with Coleman's where it was like some with Coleman's mustard on there. I think I've just imagined that. Ooh, yeah, these are most excellent crisps. I can feel the uh, mustardiness <laughs> on my tongue, which is actually a good thing. And the film that would pair them up with is the absolute classic Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange. Here, I put your breakfast in the oven. I've got to be off myself now. All right, Mum. Have a nice day at the factory. And if you haven't seen that film, Watch it, unless you're under 18, and you have to get a permission slip like I did when I was at college, even though, even though I didn't need the permission slip, because I was a mature student. So uh, let's go over to that comment lever, shall we? Not to want to sound like an improvisational blues song, but I woke up this morning and YouTube recommended to me a 57 minute, 57 second clip of Tom Savini every time he'd been on the David Letterman show. And that sent me down a rabbit hole of watching Tom Savini interviews all day. And to round off the day, think while I'm having my dindons, I'm trying to figure out what Tom Savini film to watch. At the moment, the forerunner, is that the right word? It is now, is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, part two. But the, you know what this means? First comment is by Sepley. you die and then die again while f***ing yourself. Well that's a very rude comment. I wonder if the YouTube copper police will have read that thing. Also one um, other uh, YouTube video that I saw today was Tom Savini being interviewed on a kids TV show. It was dead cool, he was coming out and you were like Hey, check this out, kids. Is that guy from Creepshow like? <laughs> and this one is by Andrew Fifner. Oh, I think this was on the uh, top 12 Friday the 13th films, and he's put them in this order. Number 12, Jason Goes to Hell. Number 11, Jason X, part 10. Number 10, the remake, which is part 12. Number 9, Freddy vs. Jason. Part 8 is part 5, A New Beginning. Part 7 is part 6, Jason Lives. They, he's picked 6 as part 2. 5 is Friday the 13th, original. 4 is Jason Takes Manhattan. Part 3 is part 3. Part 2 is The New Blood and Part one is the final chapter in That's a very accurate representation of the Twilight Zone theme. Friday the 13th part four, the final chapter, was also a Tom Savini film. So it all links up. And he said the reason he did Friday the 13th part four was because he created Jason in the original. And he thought, oh, I'll finish him off. Little did he know that they're going to be making them till the end of time. And this one is from Chevy Pop. Your channel is painfully underrated, subbed, and the little guy popping out of the cup was a lovely Easter egg. Oh, and it has been edited. Uh, they put, just realised the Easter egg is your niece. It was my age, and I'm sorry for that hair. I'm sure she's beautiful now, lol. It's a very nice comment and uh, you know we just do what we do on the channel but uh, nice to know that you know people think it's uh, better than it probably is. Like that person said, sub to the channel if you haven't already and keep it locked. Thanks for watching The Legends of Cherry Hill. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Yeah.